the first of our user experience design talks. In this particular one here, we're simply going to introduce what user experience design is all about. In terms of understanding user experience design, I suppose it's important to, to mention that over the last number of years, this is something that has grown in significance, grown in importance. And that's very much been hand in hand uh, with the, the growth in uh, software like apps, uh, where there's almost an implicit assumption that we can use software easily. It should be straightforward to use. It should be intuitive. And there's a desire uh, from those creating the software to produce pieces of software that we want to use, that excite us. And user experience design is about how we can go about enhancing that, making it possible. But we have a definition, first of all. So this is a, a nice, a formal definition of what user experience is about. Uh, it's a person's perceptions and responses, about how they perceive and how they react uh, to, to something that results from the use or anticipated use. So this also includes thinking about using something. And that something could be a product, a system, or a service. That's a very broad uh, definition. User experience design itself in turn, so UXD, UED, is the process of enhancing user satisfaction, making it better, increasing it. Um, how can we do this? We can do this by improving the usability, the ease of use, the positive uh, pleasure that is derived from using, um, in our case, our, our, our software that we are creating. So it's quite important. In terms of understanding the significance of user experience design, a little bit of context and history, I think, is quite relevant here. And things have changed. And um, I'm, I'm of a sufficient age that I can remember back that whenever you bought an item of software, it came along with manuals, quite often a lot of manuals. And I remember back to my PhD years where um, I got, it was Borland C++, a compiler. And it came along literally, and using literally in the right sense of the word here, literally with a bookshelf's worth of manuals. So a big heavy box, when you opened it up, had 15, 16 or so manuals with it. And they took you through how to use the, the software. And if you're buying a, a game very often then, it would come along with a thick manual and you would sit down and you would read the manual and you would consult the manual. Um, that's how it was. Nowadays, things are rather different. We expect, if we got a new software package, a game, an app, no matter what it is, to be able to open it up and use it immediately. We don't want or expect to need to consult a, a manual or online help. Um, in fact, quite often, if we find that we do have to Google how do we do something or use the in-help menu, it's almost an admission of a failure that it hasn't worked out the way we expected it to, to work out. So we want our software to be intuitive, very, very easy to use, hassle-free from us as a user, um, uh, from our perspective. Now, from a developer's perspective, where we are trying to create software which is intuitive, is easy to use, is straightforward, this actually is a difficult thing to do. So very much the, the burden has shifted from, uh, from the user 20, 30 years ago, where it was up to the user to read the manual, to understand it and use the software appropriately, now across to the developer. It's up to us to create software that our users can use intuitively and easily. And user experience design, in part, uh, looks at how we can best uh, accomplish that. So we'll try to define user experience in, in this proper broad sense. The account I've given there is a part of user experience design, but it's not as whole. And a good way of looking at the whole is through the user experience honeycomb. And you can see an example of it here on this slide. So if we were to take the different elements within the, the honeycomb, and at the center we have the notion of value for um, making our software, our apps, valuable to the user. And around the outside, we have different things that we can use, do that will help make it valuable. So we'll go through these useful. Um, obviously, if we're going to create something and we want the user to value it, it should be useful. It should provide 
or fulfill some of the user's needs. It should be usable, uh, that not only does it provide something useful, but it is easy for the user to use. It should be desirable. Now, this is, is, is important, it's crucially important, um, but it's quite distinct and different than, than useful. Something that has a use can be desirable for its use that it provides, but desirability can go beyond that. And you, know, you might have a new um, social network that is useful because it enables people to share or communicate in certain ways. It could be quite usable and easy to use. Uh, to use. But if it is desirable, it means it's the type of thing that people want to jump on to start using. They want to talk about. Uh, they want to share and say, I know, I do this. Um, there's quite a lot of companies, for example, Apple's a good one, where they create products that a lot of their users find desirable, that they want to be associated with. When a new one comes out, they want to own. And ultimately, that's a very high value type of reaction uh, to try to engender through our, our software in our user base. Findable is the next one. It's similar to, to usable in some ways, but uh, it, it links in with the idea that when the user is using our software, that when they're trying to find information or to discover how to do something, that this should be convenient and easy for them to, to do. Accessible ties in to the notion that um, if we're creating software, generally it's for a large user base or large user audience, there will be a range of people using it, some with different types of disability uh, or impairment. And we want to design our software so that it caters across that, that audience that we are targeting. And Credible's the last one. Users should trust and believe in the piece of software. Uh, so that means that they are not expecting it to crash. It should be reliable. That if they're entering information or asking it to look up, for example, a search or to get the best price for something, then they are happy and content that the information that it provides is credible, useful, information. It's something they can believe in, something they can trust, something they can then use. This one here um, gives you another slightly different view of user experience design. A lot of the elements within the honeycomb that we mentioned here, you can describe them as user needs. Uh, they're, they're things that look at it from the user's point of view. But that's not the whole picture. Alongside that, uh, we'll have a range of business goals. So if we're creating software, it's because we want to sell it, to get revenue or an revenue stream resulting from it. Um, basically tie into the business plan uh, goals that you have defined. Alongside that, there can also be technical strains about the types of devices or the networks on top of which your software, your business is actually running. And all three of those where they come together is actually the heart of user experience design. So it's all about creating software that fulfills the different elements around the, the honeycomb that is valuable to the user, but is also mindful of the business goals, enables the business goals to be met, and is also deliverable uh, based on whatever technical constraints there are for whatever area we are tackling. So ultimately, value is should deliver value to the sponsors. So that's the users and also whatever business sponsors we have as well. So just by way of, of highlighting what we will look at, but, but I want to sort of stress that user experience is, is much broader. So usability, uh, so it deals with user friendliness and the efficiency of the user interface. And the talks that follow after us, if you like, the, the particular segment of user experience that we're looking at, it will mostly focus on usability. But just want to flag up and to highlight that user experience in the broader sense goes way beyond that. It is looking at emotions, it's feelings, it's looking at the business model, it's looking at all of these aspects that tie uh, together. And they're very, very important. Um, it's really just for reasons of brevity that we're just going to focus on usability. Um, so don't forget that user experience is much broader in its scope. If you want to get a feel for just how much, uh, how, how, how broad it is, uh, user experience design, it is very much multidisciplinary. It includes, you see aspects here about psychology, about how people think, 
about anthropology, about sociology, about social norms that people have when they're using software. It looks at computer science, graphic design, interactive design, about how we can design interfaces on the devices that we have available, but cognitive science about how we think and process information, and so on and so forth. So we're only scratching the surface at one small element. If you do want to read uh, a bit more about it, and I wholeheartedly recommend you do, there's a few good uh, books shown here in this page. Um, Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think, it's one of the classics, and it's a good point to to start, and it's all about, as the title gives away, creating interfaces and in software that doesn't make the user unnecessarily think. Things are intuitive, easy, straightforward. And all, all of the three books here uh, will, will help tie this in. So either Designing with the Mind in Mind from Johnson or Seductive uh, Interaction Design. So takeaways uh, from this introductory talk, as users, we expect the software that we use to be intuitive, very easy to use, straightforward, not difficult. As developers, it means then that the burden of creating that type of software, it falls on our shoulders. And we have to do that. And it's not easy to do this. It actually will require genuine hard work, effort, and care and intention on our behalf if we as developers are going to create software that our users find easy to use. Um, user experience design is, I suppose, the most recent. It's a multidisciplinary study of how we can go about and, and best accomplish this. And as mentioned, but we'll, we'll look at some slices in terms of usability, but I would recommend uh, you do consider exploring the, the directed reading.